any food you have to eat uh, three times a day to be satisfied energy wise is a drug addictions a staple food all over africa and the world at large creates eating addictions you have to eat a lot of it daily but remember this natural food is not addictive a diagram is given here of various foods most addictive foods and they are rating and the least addictive foods you can see that the least addictive foods are all natural foods but of course we know that these are hybrids so both cocaine and crack are derivatives of a coca bush from a natural plant and something has been done to them to make them addictive what did the bantus eat we are aware that the bantu migration was largely fueled by farming but what did they farm how long did it take before this addictive food became a staple food what was a traditional meal like pre-introduction of this addictive food before uh, this food what did the bantus actually eat it came to africa in the 16th century and it is now a key food yet it is a crop grown and introduced during the slave trade and colonialism is there a hidden philosophical or spiritual strategy behind this as recent as the 1950s subsistence farmers had not adopted it but eventually around the 60s they adopted it and it's now all over africa how and why did this happen welcome to our tough talk where we turn popular ideas and practices upside down inside out until the truth is crystal clear our topic today is african most popular food could be a drug before we validate the statement and the topic above let us insert an eye opener by way of a diversion have you ever heard of ecological imperialism according to professor mucham sema head of school of social sciences at wiz university in south africa an american environmental historian alfred crosby coined the phrase ecological imperialism what is that a theory about the biological expansion of europe from 900 1900 it began with christopher columbus who left spain on several voyages financed by the crown in the year 1492 the territories now known as latin america were conquered however what is left out in popular media and studies is the ecological disaster that followed and the changes to the geography that we experience uh, today it was a biological weapon used against native peaceful population it is known as the columbia exchange and the beginning of so-called globalization where christopher columbus and many many others imported and exported infections into the new world the columbia exchange ecological imperialism this food consumed by bantus today could be a man-made drug from this book the book we have introduced already this was not an equal exchange the columbia exchange says uh, musema diseases and invasive species from europe dominated and obliterated much of the indigenous flora and fauna in latin america also in africa asia and many other islands where bantus and indigenous people lived although not everything was affected the imperialists also exp were exposed to the coca plant which was being consumed as part of indigenous culture and religious purpose after experimentation they developed cocaine which led to the development of the narcotics what is this drug then that is masquerading as food and now a staple diet in africa ah the answer is clear this food is maize most africans assume that maize or corn chibakwe or mpupu is a staple food but if you realize it carries a history of slavery colonialism modernization and globalization its five major families the sweet pop flory flint and dent are all dangerous and addictive from the website answersafrica.com maize different dishes you see that this is a uh, sadza this is ugali 
maize dominates. This is Sadza. It's eaten in Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa. And this is uh, Bantu Kenke. It's also Bantu or Kenke or popular foods in Ghana. Uh, this is Ugali. All right. It is also popular in Eastern Africa. This is corn and bush pear. Uh, that has been corn has been roasted very 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 sweet we used to grow up eating that this is ogi in nigeria uh akam maize meal with uh, fermented maize that's what he, they they use it to brew beer this putu or pap common in south africa or sad the same thing pap elms with uh, uh sausages and uh, this is ukpo oka that is uh, a popular in nigeria and many other is the same a uh, popcorn same Normally, sometimes put peanut butter there and you enjoy a lot. This is popcorn. Everyone knows and enjoys that and loves popcorn. The question that we rarely answer, there is a cornflakes. You see, that is what maize has done. But I want to say this. There is a shocking truth about maize. There is from the Caribbean with love cocoa. There is a shocking truth about this. And it is what we want to share today. And... Uh, hopefully cause us to revisit this because some of the problems we are having uh, uh, arises from the from uh, uh, corn let's listen to this and let's study this let's give ourselves enough time to analyze this and let us not uh, uh, assume that uh, what we know is right because there are certain facts that are hidden and certain facts that we may not know and we encourage you to visit this website to study it to read more from uh, uh, this website let's listen to this uh, lesson colonizers and foreign settlers brought mechanized agriculture into africa and many other places which also revolutionized the indolent native agriculture and manipulated maize to replace bantu grains this is clear the evolution of maize you can see it started as a wild it, it's wild and natural as teosinte 7,000 years ago and then the first cones began the domestication process with adaptation in Europe and the various and the more hybridization and more changes and in 1947 hybrids became extensive and it looks like this the origins of corn are not explicitly clear but scholars widely agree that it originated in Mexican highlands around 1500 BCE and was established in Africa around 1500 A.D.E. Before the introduction of maize, African staple diets consisted of sorghum, rupoko, millet, newark and yam. How did maize come to dominate the dishes of billions of Africans? What has been its societal and environmental impact? And is it a viable option for food security? Of course, you know that is ecological imperialism. Maize or Z-Maize, the botanical name of corn, which we may recognize as seed catalogs, is Z-Maize, like that. The word maize is taught to come from the Taino people who were Africo Africans and were Bantus of Caribbean, Mahis. The making of corn a food drug. You read this book, get this book. Writer Makan's last original story describes the successes of hybrid varieties of corn in Rhodesia and its successor states Zimbabwe, Zambia and Malawi. Learning of American hybrid corn research in 1930s, plant breeders at the Salisbury Agricultural Research Station in southern Rhodesia began to develop inbred dainty lines. Working solely to sustain European style agriculture, they produced a promising parent line in 1940 suitable to the soils of white commercial farmers and continued to work when the Federation of Rhodesia National Land emerged. They released the phenomenally successful hybrid. SR52 in 1960. This is the crop that I grew up eating. Only after creation of the Rhodesian A, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Malawi did black farmers benefit from the improvements in a hybrid maize. Although the resulting monoculture increased vulnerability to drought, maize had somewhat different histories in the three states, but also in Kenya and other places, hybrid monocropping production for national market and the major presence of agriculture science emerged this is colonization clear and the removal of our indigenous grains in the 1960s corn production really took off in africa 
This researcher says international aid agencies thought maize could be the key to food security for Africa and a hybrid maize crop was introduced into Africa. A hybrid. But maize is a bastard. It's a non-natural man-made grain grass. It is unique in that it cannot disperse its own seeds without the intervention of man. Therefore, it is non-natural. It is a disabled plant. Without human cultivation and spreading it, it would never survive. But where did it come from? How did it come about? It came from Teosinte. This is the Teosinte. Teosinte looks like, does not look like corn, like modern corn. It is a wild grass. The cob is 19 millimeters long and the 5 to 10 kennels like that are very hard and repeat hammering with a hard object to open and crack open. According to James Kennedy, a chemistry professor in Australia who has studied the plant's evolution, sweet corn is the successive of a recessive mutation in genes that control the conversion of sugar to starch. There is a problem. It's the starch, according to Dr. Sebi, it's not natural. It's glue. It's not worthy to eat. Native American tribes introduced it to European conquerors. There is the evolution of maize as Teosinte, the wild ancestor. It looks like many, many other crops found in Africa in ancient times. Maize is native to the Americans. It was domesticated only 5,000 years ago. By comparison with modern wheat, rice and maize, respectively from the Middle East, so-called Middle East Asia and Central America, the grains of Africa still retain much of the hardy, tolerant self-reliance of their wild savanna ancestors. Africa's savannas are probably the oldest grasslands on earth and have changed little during the last 14 million years. Humans have lived there longer than anywhere else on earth. Grasses have sustained us through out millions, not thousands, of generations. This is natural domestication of maize. This is the wild plant Z maize and mutated hybrid. Also, and now the modern uh, corn, as you see it there. There are the varieties of corn, ancho, apachito, and lots of cornice, various colors, blue, tuimuiri, zamorano, zapote, zapolote, all these are all hybrids. Grains every moon to Obantu must eat. Get this book, Lost Crops of Africa, volume 2. Uh, there are three volumes. Buy them and read them. So we start with the first, uh, one of the first foods that we must eat as Africans in place of maize. Fonio, it looks like that's probably the oldest African cereal and sometimes called hungry rice. Rice. African rice reserved until recently as a luxury food for religious issues. There it looks like that. It was grown in West Africa here and exported to uh, into Southern America during a slavery. And then they brought maize instead of that. Finger millet neglected internationally, although it is a staple for millions. Finger millet is native to Ethiopia and Ugandan highlands. It's also popular in Southern Africa. I grew up drinking maheu and drinking juice from them. It can withstand cultivation at altitudes over 2,000 meters above sea level, has a high drought rate tolerance and high levels of macronutrients. Pictured above is, are the panicles of Maridad, one of the finger millet varieties released by Dr. Crispus Odiori, and this was supplied by this uh, site here. Powerful and mind cleanser grains, peel millet. Millet, a widely used grain that still holds great untapped potential, munga ompunga, looks like that. Sorghum, looks like that. Reddish, it's gluten free, high in fi fiber and micro uh, nutrients. The injera, teff, the wonder food, looks like that. Comes from, if you go to this website, Precision Nutrition, a uh, teff is a grain, a gluten free grain. It grows predominantly in Ethiopia and Eritrea. Teff is also the fastest sprouting grain, taking only 36 hours to sprout. Teff is rich in B vitamins and is also a great source of minerals including calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, potassium and zinc. There it is, time to refresh. We must eat foods compatible with our ancientness and greatness. What Bantus on earth eat today 
is the food associated with colonization and slavery. We are not free if we still eat and drink oppressive foods, addictive foods. We can physically look like black carbon melaninated individuals, but if we enjoy pizza or French cuisine, we cannot insist we are Afrocentric but eccentric. We must eat and drink natural foods and the drinks. Why? Just like Christianity, Islam and Judaism, all popular religions and spiritualities which are man-made and propagated to mislead, so too man-made food would colonize you. Maize, more commonly known as corn, is a corn. It provides the best illustration how domesticated crops can also represent domestication of humans too, just like how Africans have been domesticated and colonized by an enslaving agenda that causes us to eat unnatural food and imprison ourselves. If we insist like an addict to eat maize, we are colonized. We are proving that we have been dominated and conquered. Is this not the time to resolve bantu grains? Start eating small grains of the motherland today. Otherwise, we are off the radar in terms of spirituality. We may all be addicts, addicted to maize and its associated byproducts. Therefore, we must face this battle and spread this message. Think about this if you will. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred uh, battle sun too. Subscribe to our channel, Hamid Ibru Ethics. This is Peter Rabbi. LM to me, Zulu. This is our email. Thank you. Siabonga Tatenda. Till next time. Know your addiction. Goodbye.